Hello, I'm Casey Dinja, Senior Advisor for the American Society of Civil Engineers. Thanks for joining us today for a discussion on safety in construction and civil engineering. My guest today is John Gambatis, Civil and Construction Engineering Professor at Oregon State University and Co-Chair of ASCE's Construction Safety Committee. Welcome, John. Thank you, Casey. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and share what I know about safety. Civil engineering and construction are high-risk industries, often exposing workers to serious hazards. According to OSHA, one in five worker deaths in 2018 were in construction. And the leading causes refer to the aptly named fatal four, which includes falling, being struck by objects, electrocution, and caught in between hazards. John, first, what factors lead to potential hazards and are there any common mistakes that can heighten these risks? That's a good question, Casey, and, and actually a good starting point for talking about safety. So those fatal four are, are significant issues that we need to be aware of. Nobody wants to go home hurt. We all want to be safe, and we know how to be safe. However, what happens is sometimes we are not safe and we have those accidents, unfortunately. Why do those occur? Well, research also shows that while site conditions may be hazardous, Primarily, we have human behavior that are the primary issues in terms of causing accidents. Those behaviors might be, we get distracted. We're human, right? We get distracted. We forget things. We forget to implement uh, safety control. We might uh, put other priorities first. We might put cost or schedule before safety or productivity. So all of those things contribute to that hazard going from something just, that just is there to an accident where we get injured. What has the profession done in the past to minimize these dangers? Safety is our business, whether it's the safety of the person using the facility, operating it, or the person constructing it. So the profession actually has done quite a bit. Some of those things uh, involve simply training. Uh, we've got a lot of different training uh, resources that are available to us. Obviously, we also have OSHA standards, right? We've developed these OSHA standards over time, and they make sure that we are safe in different situations. We have within ASCE different resources. We've got a code of ethics that says we shall hold safety paramount, and we follow that code of ethics. We have policy statements like ASCE policy statement 350 on construction site safety. We also have uh, many different uh, technologies that have been developed to make, to help workers stay safe. Uh, robotics and automation is being developed. Uh, we have education classes that are available. So the prof profession has actually made significant steps to provide that information to the industry. Why should companies and leaders prioritize safety when designing and planning a project? What we're uh, getting into now is a, a topic, what I would call prevention through design or safety through design. It's essentially saying that safety doesn't start when we start construction. Safety starts when we start the overall project, when we start planning it, when we designing it, when we design it, when we bid it out, when we, when we build it. And so with that safety management perspective in mind, we can do certain things during the planning of the project, during the design of the project, during the procurement of the construction services before we even get to the construction site. And that might involve simply when I look at a design and I design the concrete beam or the steel column or lay out the project, I design the roadway or the bridge, any element of it, I think to myself, okay, how might this design impact those who are building it? So it's not about means and methods. That's rightfully left up to the contractor to take care of. And there are many things that the contractor will put in place during construction to provide safety during implementation of those means and methods. What we're talking about though is when I make decisions about the design, or when they make decisions about planning that design, let's think about the safety of the people who are gonna build it or maintain it. And so it's examples like I can build a taller parapet 
so that it provides a guardrail during construction. It might be an example like uh, orienting a piece of equipment so it's easier to access during implementation, installation, excuse me, and also maintenance of that equipment. Uh, many different things have been developed in terms of ideas for how to make it, it safe. So executing safety procedures is just as important as planning them. Can you share some tips on maintaining safety measures throughout a project? You know, that's a very important part of safety. We often say that we need to walk the talk. And when we make a plan, we need to act and, and do as we plan. I, I did some research recently where we investigated the ability and the uh, tendency for workers to go against their safety training. And unfortunately, we found that many people do not do as they are trained. About 50% of the people that we surveyed said sometimes they go against, knowingly go against their safety training. So that's unfortunate. So we need, we need to actually do what we plan to do. We need to have upper management in a firm. When they go out to a site, they need to wear that personal protective equipment. They need to talk about safety with the workers. When there is a decision between cost and productivity and safety, they need to show that safety is important and it needs to be consistent. In addition to that, owners and clients, when they, when they are out on a site, they can do that as well. They can reinforce safety. They can reinforce it through their contracts, through their procurement, who they hire, who, how they talk about the project. Are there other practices we can implement to further eliminate hazards? I've mentioned training. I've mentioned toolbox meetings. I mentioned prevention through design. All of those are wonderful. Other things that we uh, like to implement really follow that hierarchy of controls where we try to eliminate the exposure, reduce the frequency, or do things like reduce the amount of energy present so that the severity is less. So those things might be like using robotics and automation. There are wonderful new technologies that are coming out that remove the worker from the workspace. We can simply also provide uh, that connection between the designer and the constructor. When there is that communication between them, when the constructor can say to the designer, hey, it would really help if you designed it in a certain way to make it safer, that simple communication can benefit the constructor in a long way. John, thank you for joining me today for this valuable discussion on safety and construction and the civil engineering profession. Thank you, Casey. I enjoyed it, and uh, thank you for your interest. For more information on ASCE's interchange program, visit ASCE.org slash interchange. Thanks for tuning in today, and we'll see you next time on the ASCE Interchange.